Hello everyone, welcome back. So I've done a lot of short lectures and a lot of them have been interesting and fun. Uh, but occasionally, of course, when we study history, we also have to look at some more serious, harder events to talk about. And one of the most important topics is, of course, the Holocaust. And why did the Holocaust happen? And very often the reply is, well, Hitler. And, you know, Hitler, of course, was this evil monster that was, of course, responsible for the Holocaust. But what I also always have reminded my students is that Hitler was not in every gas chamber, just like Stalin was not in every gulag. It was individuals who were part of this monstrous event in human history. And there are a couple ideas that, yes, have been talked about before, but I think definitely are worth emphasizing in terms of why the Holocaust happened. So I just want to walk you through a couple of ideas that, that I don't know if we, people think about enough. And so the first idea in terms of why the Holocaust happened beyond Hitler has to do with a concept that we heard a lot after the war. And right after the war, very often when these Nazis were captured, they would oftentimes say, quote, unquote, I was just following orders. Guys, our morality is not something, good morality is not something we are born with. It is a muscle that needs to be worked constantly. And every day and every week and every month and every year, there are events in our lives which kind of work that muscle, that muscle memory of morality. And very often these are dress rehearsals, small events that, that do we make the right choices and how do we make the right choices? But we have to be very conscious of it. To illustrate what I'm talking about, I wanna just briefly discuss this idea of what was called the Milgram experiment. And this was done after World War II. Just to set this up for you, for those of you who've never heard this before, um, in the Milgram experiment, they took quite a few people, and this man over here that I'm going to circle, um, he is the individual who is the test subject. He has no idea what's going on. He is simply told by this man in a white coat you see here that to ask questions of another guy he can't see. And every time he gets those questions wrong, to zap him because they're trying to see if you can learn, if you get people to learn better by zapping them if they get the wrong answer. Silly. Anyways. Um, he's given instructions to zap the other person. And every time he asks a question, the guy gets it wrong, he, he gets it wrong, he zaps, and the guy starts screaming, ah! Now the guy on the other side is not really being zapped, but he doesn't know it. This man right here, right? Again, this man right here, he, he's just constantly zapping the other guy with electrical votes because the guy in the white coat told him to. And as you watch these Milgram experiments, you see over and over again, sometimes people start questioning, you know, why am I doing this? Should I be doing this? The guy's screaming and the guy in the white coat just says, you know, don't worry, I'll be responsible. And the guy's like, all right. And he zaps him again. And time after time, people were doing that. And they've done many of these other experiments in society. And it really does show us this, this mentality that so many people have of simply blindly following orders, simply complying, even when things are objectively absurd. And obviously most day-to-day -day things do not rise up to the Holocaust level. But if we don't work that muscle on things that lead up to it, then when we get to more serious things, then people just follow orders and they just comply just because a man in a white coat told them to. And that was definitely one of the factors why the Holocaust happened. And of course, there were individuals who didn't follow orders and saved Jews and did so many things to save so many different people. Um, so I think that's worth noting as well and remembering. So that's in a concept. And then there's one other idea I just want to explore with you because this is, I think, uh, incredibly powerful and from one of uh, my, my most um, influential writers I've ever read, a man named Viktor Frankl. And Viktor Frankl wrote this amazing book called Man's Search for Meaning. Uh, he talks about a lot of ideas in there. One of his, he's a Holocaust survivor, uh, psychologist, and you know he talks about you, know, you can't control what happens in your life, how you react to the things that happen. But one of his most powerful ideas that I think really leads to why the Holocaust happened and how we need to learn from this is this idea that there are only two races in the world, the race of the decent man and the race of the indecent man. And without a doubt, we are in a situation where too many times people look at individuals simply through the lens of their race and make judgments about individuals simply based on the color of their skin. 
And this is incredibly dangerous to give attributes, to assign privilege, to, to give characteristics to any individual based on nothing more than looking at them and saying, well, you're black, you're white, you're Hispanic. And remember, during the Holocaust, it, it wasn't just, you know, Jews Hitler murdered, right? It was gypsies, Slavs, Poles, homosexuals. And to say, you know, you have these characteristics or attributes because of the color of your skin, that never, ever ends well. In, in all my years of teaching, I've been doing this for over a generation now, I have had thousands on top of thousands of students of every race, of every background, of every heritage. I, by now, I am I'm pretty close to certain. And one of the things I've learned is as I've seen every one of my students, they're all individuals. I don't know what demons they've gone through, what problems they've had, what challenges their life story until you get to know them as individuals. And we need to really work on a lot more on, on that perspective of looking at people in that way. Because if we fail to do that, then again, it's the same idea of that morality muscle being worked. If you start to put people in little boxes and say, well, you're white, you have these characteristics, you're black, you have these characteristics, you're Hispanic, you must have these characteristics. And then we have to deal with you in certain ways because of, because of those things. It, it's never good. And, and, you know, there are people even who say, well, we, we're doing this with good intentions. Well, no, it never works out well. And so these are a few ideas that I don't think are often talked about enough, you know, in, in terms of why the Holocaust happened. And I'm, I'm hoping this particular lecture gave you something to think about, right? Something more deeper to think about and so forth uh, regarding, you know, one of the most horrific events in human history. All right. Thank you. I um, hope it gave you something to ponder. You have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you.